that the Almighty God will be the shield and the buckler over these people. It is only God's protection that cannot be broken, that cannot uh, uh, be breached. So let's pray tonight that the, the, the sure protection of the law will be over our military men and all the people in that, in that place. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Almighty Father, we come to you tonight. How we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will uh, spread out your wings over the people, the military, the civilians that have been evacuated, the over 1,000 Americans that are still in that land, even the Afghans themselves who want to leave the country. You will spread your wings over them. You will be their sure protection, even at this time, in the name of Jesus. We ask Almighty God for your intervention. Lord, we know your protection cannot be breached. When you are a pillar of fire for the Israelites, Pharaoh could not succeed to get to them. We pray, therefore, that in the name of Jesus, Lord, you will arise as the pillar of protection for these people at this time, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. I, I, I want us to pray that going on from here, you see, there are so many things ahead. There's a revelation uh, uh, that I, I believe America is getting now that uh, the, the people they are dealing with, I, I was reading today, one of the military has said, they are asking him, uh, what is going to happen? Uh, are they going to trust the uh, Afghan army at, at this time? He said something that's so touching. He said, you can only hear what they say. He said, you don't know what they would do. See, when you are dealing with people who can say something and do something else. So we're going to pray this prayer tonight that the Lord himself will deliver this country, the United States, from the situation that we have found ourselves at this time. Shall we pray again in Jesus' name? Almighty God, we come to you. We pray, Lord, that you will deliver this nation at this time. We pray for your deliverance. Yes, we can confess that we are the strongest in the whole earth regarding military strength. But Lord, it's a, a different ball game when you find yourself in the midst of deceivers, people that will uh, even bait you to death. Father, we therefore pray at this time that you will deliver our land, you will deliver the United States from this situation at this time in the name of Jesus Christ. By your mercy, oh God, we pray your hand of deliverance will reach out to the military and all our people who are thousands of miles away in that country called Afghanistan. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And as we do that, I just want us to pray for Nigeria also. Let's ask the Lord tonight that no matter how much the enemy thinks he's gotten the grip of the, the, the country Nigeria, the Lord will uh, 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 take their hands weaken their hands, weaken the grip of such enemies of peace. The Lord will weaken their hands over the nation Nigeria. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Everlasting Father, we call you tonight, again also over Nigeria, whatever length the people have gone, the enemies of the land, the oppressors, the wicked people have gone to think that they have gotten the grip of the land. We pray tonight that by your own mighty hand, you will weaken their hands, O oh God. Lord, you will loosen their, you, you will loosen your own power, your overwhelming power over them. This mountain, whatever they have planted, or putting whatever has been put down. And Lord, we clean every force that has been put in place so that you can deliver the innocence of that land. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's pray tonight again, Lord. Speak to us. 
bless us as we go into your world. Let's pray that prayer. Father, we commit ourselves to you tonight. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us tonight. We ask that you will bless us tonight, that we will not be the same after this meeting. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we're going to be uh, watching the voice of vision. Somebody may ask me and say, voice of vision was not a message. Yes, it was a message. Because when the Lord sends his word, he sends to us what he wants us to hear so that we can obey, so that we can be instructed, so that we can understand and have a revelation of what we need to do. And that's exactly what a voice of vision was. Shows to us where God has brought us and where we are going from here. And I believe that message needs to be heard again by every member of the government in North America. So tonight I welcome you to this session. And I want you, even if you attended the meeting and you heard it once, to listen as, as you have never heard it before and allow the Lord to minister to you in a fresh manner. Over to you, Brother Francis. To God be the glory for bringing us together again on this fourth day of the of the convention. Is well, I'm going to be going through volume? the voice of vision in Habakkuk chapter two, okay. two to three. It says then the Lord answered me and said. Write the vision and make it plain on tablet that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from government N.H. to all the nations of the earth. We know that God has given our convention a global touch. So we welcome all who have joined us from different continents of the world. Almost all the continents except a tactical, I believe. We pray that the apostolic deposits the Lord of the harvest has made in your life will turn you into a turnaround agent, bringing permanent revolution to your world. I seize this opportunity to appreciate the chosen generation for taking ownership of this virtual convention from start to finish. They did everything, including the budget, including the program, and the implementation. It's been awesome. We appreciate the King Benga Atilola for providing exceptional leadership for the team. You showed practically what it means to be totally committed to the Lord. May you really be blessed. Yeah. You know, I got a comment uh, from someone watching from the UK about this convention. He said, this is awesome. The effects of young people in the church make a great difference. Thanks to God and thanks to our young people. You cannot be under this kind of ministration and not be changed. Thanks to the magnification team under the leadership of Deacon David, okay? Come on, let's celebrate God. Your ministry has been a great blessing. I mean you and your assistants and the entire team. 
Also, we thank all the assemblies and individuals that featured in this convention. Grace to you all. Come on, let's celebrate. It is time to celebrate, people. <laughs> Thanks to the children department, the workers under the leadership of Sister Dr. Fatima Alpha, for your proactiveness in ensuring that our children are well fed spiritually during this convention. Grace to you. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. We appreciate the sponsors of this convention for your sacrificial giving to make sure that this convention was held debt free. The blessing of the Lord will not depart from your household. Come on, let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate them. We want to appreciate the speakers at this convention, beginning from our Father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. Holudele Abina, who, despite his tight schedule, took time to minister to us and declared this convention open. His patriarchal decrees created an atmosphere of unlimited grace under which this convention was held. Come on, let's celebrate our Father in the Lord. Come on, let's, let's do that. And we really appreciate our DGO, Apostles Greg and Colette Toch, Apostles Nathan and Chaifa Berry, and other government NA speakers for bringing fresh bread to God's people. Come on, let's celebrate, let's celebrate all our speakers. I really want to appreciate my wife, Rosalind, and my children, Lois and Doris, for abandoning me to God without any reservation and, and with contentment. You know, they do not have the luxury of what others enjoy. But I want to thank them for their contentment. And when I see their contribution to the work, I'm glad and encouraged. Come on, help me celebrate them. Come on. Well, you know, for information, I, I call my wife my promised land. That is, that is it. That's my promised land right there. And for those who are joining us for the first time, we always have the voice of vision inserted into our convention program every year to share with God's people the righteous acts of the Lord, the current information for corporate alignment, the apostolic projections for all round development, and the apostolic instruction for victorious living as an apostolic movement with global impact. So the voice of vision time is always apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic, pastoral, and didactic. It is a legacy of wisdom to create an atmosphere of corporate possibilities and a future without impediment to the glory of God. God is so good to us in government and hey. I want to repeat that. God is so good to us in government and hey. God is so good to us in government and a in this year of supernatural prosperity this is our testimony we give thanks to the lord for his marvelous acts in our midst we are enjoying his goodness on every side our unity in him is getting stronger and we are enjoying his peace Despite the pandemic ravaging our world, we are growing stronger and deeper in our love for God, connecting us to the fullness of God. I have to let you know that government NA is growing younger. As the younger generation has taken over, 
just as the Lord has said. Thanks to the National Executive Board, and by the grace of God, I have two members of the National Executive Board present with me to give us support here. Come on, let's celebrate them. Pastor Solomon Ajayi and our National Secretary, Pastor Taiwo Fagui. Come on, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate, you know, Pastor Dr. Ojetayo, the ANO, where he is. Let's celebrate Pastor Samuel Adusi, Canada, where he is. Let's celebrate Pastor Tosin Oladapo, where he is. And let's celebrate Pastor Dr. Daramola, where he is. Come on, let's do that. Those are our leaders. We appreciate, we appreciate. The National Pastors' Body, the Council of Ministers, and Departmental Leaders, for providing exceptional leadership for us in government N.A. Like the song of Deborah, Israel's leaders took charge and the people gladly followed. Praise the Lord, Judges 5.2. Thanks to you all for gladly following. Because if we are leading and you are not following, nothing significant will be achieved. Come on, let's celebrate the followers that we have in government NA. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Without you, we cannot accomplish anything. This year's voice of vision is unique. And I wanted to pay attention here. This year's voice of vision is unique because it is the penultimate one for this administration. So the first thing on the agenda is to share the transition process with us. One of our values in government is creating a culture of transparency and openness. We do not have any shade of gray in our operations. In government NA, we do not compromise the process to make progress. So we have an established process for everything we do. And today, I will be sharing with you the process of transition. So the first thing I have here is government NA apex leadership transition. According to God's design and human limitations, no leadership is meant to be forever. So there is always a need for succession planning for a seamless transition. In Numbers chapter 27, 16 to 18, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, Set a man over the congregation who may go out before them and go in before them, who may lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hand on him. The first time of the current leaders of government NA started on August 1st, 2012. And the leadership was reappointed according to our constitution by divine counsel in July 2017. The second time would end on July 17, 2022. The time has come for the baron to be passed because there is another phase God is set to bring government NA. And I believe God has found his vessels to use to fulfill his will. According to chapter 4F1B1, 
of our Constitution. The national overseer shall be appointed as follows. The NEB nominates an individual from the NPB. And the nomination is forwarded to the general overseer. The executive council finally confirms the appointment. And according to chapter 4F2B of our constitution, the associate national overseer shall be appointed as follows. The NEB nominates an individual from the NPB, national pastor's body. The nomination is forwarded to the general overseer and the executive council finally confirms the appointment. The current transition process approved by the NEB, National Executive Board, in December 2020, and shared conclusively with the NPB in February 2021 for the states. The incumbent NO shall nominate the NO and ANO candidate to the NEB after spending time in prayer. The NEB shall deliberate on the nominees and evaluate the nominees' eligibility as spelled out in the Constitution. If satisfied, the nominees' names shall be presented to the NPB by the incumbent national overseer for evaluation and contribution. Suppose the NEB finds the nominees ineligible for the office, the NEB shall allow the incumbent NO to present another candidate. And suppose the nominee is found ineligible at the second attempt, in that case, the NEB will take over the process and nominate a candidate from the NPB. After thorough NEB and NPB evaluation and acceptance, the chosen candidates shall be presented to the general overseer and the ESCO, the Executive Council of Gospel Faith Mission Worldwide, for ratification, respectively. The process shall be completed a year before the expiration of the term of the incumbent. The appointed NO shall be called NO designate, NOD, while shadowing the incumbent NO for a seamless transition. The installation shall be done on the last day of the annual convention or any other day chosen by the NEB. On December 18, 2020, the National Overseer shared with the NEB as follows. I consider it an apostolic duty to present to you at this penultimate retreat the name of the person I have heard. On May 3rd, 2020, I received Pastor Taiwo Fagui, 48 then, but 49 now, to serve as the next national overseer, and Pastor Ebenezer Ihenebome, 41 then, but now 42, to work alongside him as his associate. And following the presentation of the nominees by the national overseer to the board, on December 18, 2020, at 10.05 p.m. on April 7, 2021, at a meeting called for that purpose, the board unanimously agreed that Pastor Taiwo Olani Fagui be the next national overseer and Pastor Oshoke Ihenebome be the associate national overseer, respectively. The NEB decision was presented to the National Pastors' Body, NPB, on May 1, 2021. And after an elaborate brainstorming and Council of Wisdom session, which involved a prepared speech from every member, we unanimously came up with this resolution based on what we all shared we can say that it pleased the Holy Spirit and us for Pastor Fagui and Pastor Ihenebome to be the next NO and ANO, respectively, of government NA. The decision of the nominees was presented to the general overseer on May 25th, 2021, and according to him, he has nothing 
against the approval of their nominees. He, in turn, presented the names to the ESCO on May the 28th at the ESCO meeting. And the nominees for both the National Overseer and Associate National Overseer were unanimously approved and ratified by the Executive Council of the Gospel Faith Mission Worldwide. The General Secretary had written a letter to that effect. And you can see, you know, the letterhead of the Gospel Faith Mission Worldwide. And you can see it signed by the General Secretary. The National Overseer Government North America, dear servant of the Most High God, appointment of Government NA National and Associate National Overseer, Calvary greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm directed by the General Overseer of the Gospel Faith Mission International Government and the Executive Council of the Church to acknowledge the receipt of your letter on the above subject matter and to inform you that the nominees you presented in the letter were carefully considered. At the end of the deliberations, the Council unanimously approved the appointments of Pastor Taiwo Olani Fagui and Pastor Ebenezer Oshoke in Hennebome as the next National Overseer and Associate National Overseer respectively, since they both met the qualifications of the respective offices as stipulated in Chapter 4 of your Constitution. I am pleased to heard that the Executive Council commended your leadership, most especially your thoroughness, in following the due process, as well as the smooth transition and transfer of responsibility to the next leaders. God bless you as we move on towards the next phase of the process and the next phase of your ministry. Yours in his vineyard, Pastor S.O. Omowumi, General Secretary. The General Overseer and the Executive Council's decision on the next National and Associate National Overseers of Government NA was shared with the National Council of Ministers, pastors, elders, deacons, and deaconesses. On Saturday, July 3rd, 2021, and the information was well received as a divine direction for us in government NA. So, by the grace of God and the approval of the General Overseer and the Executive Council of Government worldwide, I, Sunday, Joseph Adu, the National Overseer of the Gospel Faith Mission North America, now present to the entire congregation of Government NA, the next National <laughs> Overseer of Government and a Pastor Taiwo Olani Fagui. And the next Associate National Overseer, Pastor Ebenezer Oshoke. Ihenebome. Come on, let's celebrate him. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, but you can see his picture on 
the screen. You could see that both of them are handsome. Amen. God bless you. You can go back to your seat. How are you saying? Listen to this important information. Listen, listen, listen very well. Pastor Taiwo Olaniyi Fabui will be the NO designate, NOD. And Pastor Ebenezer Ehenebome, the ANO designate, ANOD, today. The wisdom behind this is to allow them to shadow the incumbent NO and ANO for a year for a seamless transition. Let us accept and obey them as we begin to share our assignments and honor with them during the transition period until they take over from us. Receive them as you would receive us and more. The NOD will double as the NS until its inauguration. The NOD and ANOD shall operate from their bases. House of Change in Baltimore and House of Restoration in Atlanta, Georgia, respectively, even after their installation into the prospective offices. In other words, Pastor Fagui will continue to be the resident pastor of House of Change. And uh, Pastor Ihene Bome will continue to be the resident pastor you know, of House of Restoration. The registered headquarters of the mission, Government NA, shall be situated at 3812 38 Street, Brentwood, Maryland. While the operational headquarters shall be situated at 10610 Liberty Road, Rounderstown, MD21133, with effects from July 17, 2020, being the base of the next national overseer. This change by the National Executive Board shall be implemented without requiring an amendment to the Constitution, effective from July 17, 2022. The present headquarter shall remain the base of the AGO foreign missions. The wives of the next NO and ANO shall take on the leadership of the GVL. That is the women wing. <laughs> Starting with their husbands at the same time. Although the time of the ministry ed is three years renewable, there shall be a memorandum of understanding that their thumb hands automatically with their husbands. The transition timeline. The chosen national overseer to present the NEB, the nominee for the national secretary and other offices, if possible. There's going to be boss deliberation, sharing with the NPB appointments, the transition team preparation for the installation. And on July 17, 2022, we're going to have the installation service. Let us keep praying for the process. It is well. Amen. Everybody shout, it is well. It is well. Come on, let's celebrate the goodness of God to us in God in heaven. <laughs> FES facilitators appreciation. We know that government NA would be very rich, wealthy, and prosperous. Amen. 
in 2020, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, a team of seven men came up with a vision to start a financial empowerment school to actualize this prophetic reality. The school's goal is to raise 60% investors, 40% entrepreneurs, and business owners, and reduce personal credit card utilization to zero to 30%. We bless the Lord for the vision and the execution of FES. Testimonies abound on the positive effect of the school on the well-being of the participants, the transformation of mind, self-discovery, improved financial planning, setting up of new businesses, authorship of new books, better credit card management, setting of financial and book clubs, mentorship, the proliferation of investors and innovators, among others. Comments from participants, FES, is not only about dispensing knowledge, but the spirit of the Lord is behind it. That kind of pushes you to do what you have been procrastinating about. You work on it as you learned it. FES is the beginning of greater things to come that will call support government NA to a global movement. I can see that the shift is already taking place in government NA. Please let the school continue because of the next generation. The program should not end like this, but should be made into a formal school where others could come and learn. There is a wealth of knowledge being dispensed at the school. We know that God's people and government NA will not remain the same. Thanks to the facilitators for doing exceptionally well. We thank the Lord for the life and ministry of the facilitators. By name, Brother Femi Shonoga. Come on, celebrate, 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 celebrate. Dekin Dipo Adeshino. Dekin Olubenga Atilola. Dekin Dimeji Adedere. Elder Olaolua Abino. Elder Ayodeji Adeshino. And Pastor Shegun Adu. Church, let's appreciate them wherever we are. Let us let them know how much we are grateful to them for their selflessness and generosity. The NEB decided that we should appreciate them with a little token, living by our culture of appreciation. So each of them will receive this envelope. I'm not going to tell you what is in there. <laughs> and this plaque, you know, let me read it to you. The plaque is uh, presented to Pastor Olushegun Adu in recognition of your honorary, selfless, and sacrificial contribution as a facilitator in the Government NA Financial Empowerment School, November 2020 to June 2021. You are commended for the vision and successful execution of the FES. Government NA and our members will not remain the same because of the wealth of knowledge you shared with participants at the school. May the Lord, may the Lord richly reward and continue to uphold you in his service. The Gospel Faith Mission, North America, July 18, 2021. All right, so each of them will receive this. Come on, let's celebrate, let's celebrate them one more time. As you know, that learning begins when the class session ends. So let us go back and listen to the teachings again. You have that on the website. Act on what we have learned. Ask questions from the facilitators for further clarification and collaborate to achieve great things. 
COVID-19 updates. We bless the Lord for his mercies over us, and we appreciate all of us for cooperating with the local and national leadership on this matter. We have the liberty to go back to congregational worship, but with caution. Let us make sure we follow the directives of our local assembly leadership. COVID-19 is not a death sentence. So fear not. Even if you have tested positive, you are under the shadow of the Almighty. So the COVID-19 calamity must pass over you by his mercies. You will recover and leave. Let us continue to abide by the precautionary measures. If you have been mandated to receive the vaccine, do so without fear. I've received, you know, both doses, you know, I've been vaccinated. So do so without fear, trusting in the Lord that nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you have not done so, kindly follow the advice of your physician. Operation 2030 and Government NA. Operation 2030 and Government NA. Our GO said, the decade of 2020 to 2030 is a decade of harvest. Our churches will become centers of solution, where the power of God is constantly made manifest to solve the problems of the people and meet their needs. In government NA, in this decade of harvest, we want to believe God for the following. Raising kingdom-minded people, disciples. 20% numerical increase every year. 20% financial increase every year. Raising formidable marketplace kingdom invaders and kingdom financiers. Growing government NA young, it is the CG decade. It is the CG decade. It is the CG decade. Brother Korede Fanilola said this when he was ministering. As you invest in the next generation, your fruitfulness continues to grow. Sister Dr. Dukwe Shogbamu followed it up with this. The moment is now. When we involve the youths, our leaders can rest in the time of transition. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. Elijah Abino, on June 7th, when he was speaking to the Council of Ministers in Gospel Faith Mission Worldwide asked a thought-provoking question. He said, if the younger ones perform lower than we do, is that a credit to us? If the younger ones perform lower than we do, is that a credit to us? It is a credit to us that our children are doing better than us. It is to our glory. And we celebrate God's goodness in their lives. So CG, it is your decade. It is your time. Shine on. We'll be following after you. Lead on. We'll be following after you. Take the mantle of leadership and we will obey you. We believe God for viability of our existing churches numerically and financially. Acquiring our gospel city land, property, and building. Having a school of ministry to raise laborers. Well, you've been hearing CG, CG. Well, we have people joining us from around the world, you know. That is Chosen Generation. That is the acronym for the Youth and the Young Adult Ministry of the Gospel Faith Mission International. We have engineers, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have physicians, we have people of different, you know, uh, you know um, um, professions, you know, in there. 
We are blessed in government NA. Having a school of ministry to raise laborers, we have set up government NA school of ministry management team, and they are presently incarnating division. And we hope to start our school of ministry very soon. A holistic approach to ministry. Like I told you when I was ministering, my pastor told me, he said, Pastor, I do go to the Bible school. And thank God that I did. You know, I was there with Pastor Joe, the former general uh, secretary of the Gospel Faith Mission International. I was there with Pastor Professor Akarakiri. You know, I was there. You know, that was the set of Pastor, late Pastor Paul Akako as well. You know, I went to the Bible school and we thank God for what the Lord is, you know, using us to do. Right? We, we, had, we, we had our own professions, but, you know, when the call of the Lord came, we prepared. And thank God for what the Lord is using us to do all around the world. So the ball is now in your court. Knowledge is very, very important. Knowledge is very, very important. And by the grace of God, we are starting government NA school of ministry. It's going to be five-fold ministry school. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right? Yeah. We're got, you're going to learn theology there. Not only that, you know, you're going to learn how to prosper well in the marketplace. It's going to be holistic. All right? So prepare for that. We will send a questionnaire to us about it. And we want our young people and everyone to take advantage of this opportunity to step into their calling. Extending the different, you know, to different geographical zones of the United States, Canada, and other countries in South and Central America. We believe God for that. And we have a mandate to take the gospel to South America. We presently have links to Brazil and Guyana waiting for the Kairos movement. We believe God for outreach to nations, adopting mission fields, because we are the apostolic hub for foreign missions. And we know that we exist to make the nations glad. So let us cooperate with our pastors as we flesh this out year after year in ever-increasing measures by faith with corresponding actions. Next. Government NA singles. Government NA singles. We have had a burden for our singles for some time now that we need to do something more aggressive. Some of our youths are advancing in age without being engaged, and we need to be intentional to create an atmosphere of possibilities for them, yes, yes. trusting in God for perfection. Yes. We know that this is not peculiar to us. It happens in all the denominations. It is all over, all over the place because of different factors, economic factor, cultural factor, among others. We need to take a forum or have a forum where we bring our singles together for fellowship and exposure. And I believe somebody is saying yes to that. We need to create a media platform where they can interact with other government members worldwide. Because your bone could be in South Africa. Your, your, your bone, you know, could be uh, in Afghanistan. I heard somebody speaking in tongues. I said, now, nah, wow, I don't know what that means. <laughs> we need to engage a minister with the calling and passion for relationships. We sense a shift in the positive direction. So we need to raise prayer altars for our singles collectively. None of them shall lack their covenant mate. Amen. Can I have a shout of amen to that? Amen. But take note, we appeal to our singles to avoid rushing into unwholesome relationships. Instead, wait on the Lord and follow the process as revealed in God's word. It is not a crime 
to stop a relationship that is unwholesome. No matter how much emotions, years, and resources you have invested in it, it is better to stop than to go on and regret for life. God has you in his mind. He that believes will not make haste. It is the desire of the leadership, particularly our GO, and it is my desire also that singles in government worldwide and in government NA will marry in the mission. All right? Your, your, your link could be anywhere. We are not saying it's a law that you have to marry in the mission. But you know that fathers have their mind. They have their mind. You know, like Abraham called, you know, his servant and said, do not, do not choose here. Go to my people. That is always the heart of a father. All right? But note this. The bone of your bone could be anywhere. And you have the liberty. You have the liberty. So don't, don't quote me wrongly and say, Pastor Adu said, you can only marry in government. No. But I'm just saying it is a desire. We're just thinking loud. Okay? That, you know, you marry in the mission. Having the same belief system. You know, go a long way in establishing a peaceful home. Having the same belief system. Because there are different belief systems, you know, even in the body of Christ now. And you want to be very, very careful. That is why working on your character and living by the book is essential. This is your decade of supernatural connection and divine settlement. If you're a single person, I want you to say amen. I'm going to say it two more times. This is your decade of supernatural connection amen. and divine settlement. I'm going to say it for the last time. This is your decade of supernatural connection amen. and divine settlement. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Government NA Marriage Guidelines Handbook. Mary Guidelines Handbook. The leadership spent time and resources to put this together for our good. The material is for singles and married, and for every member to read, share, and store, store in their library. The marriage committee members are to read it from cover to cover and align. Even suits. The property is debt-free and well-managed. We purchased a York 40 generator to supplement the 100 kVA generator for better management of resources, and it was bought debt-free. We are presently doing a renovation project of replacement, repairs, repainting at Even Suites to ensure the building looks pristine again. Government City Partnership Drive. Gospel City Partnership Drive. For us to do big things together, it will require partnership. And partnership seat for us, therefore, is not just an annual offering, but also a sacrificial legacy of wisdom for unstoppable provision for us in government NA. We partner not because of what we want to get, but because we are committed to seeing the work advance. And indeed, we will reap the blessing of sacrificial commitment in due season if we faint not. On January 10, 2021, we launched a prophetic campaign to raise a million dollars in 18 months for our Gospel City project. This drive is for every member of government NA. It's for every member and not people from a particular geographical location. It is not only for a specific age group. I want that truth to sink in. It is for all. It is for our children. 
it is for the CG, it is for GIT, it is for GVL, it is for the Council of Ministers, it is for the National Pastors Body, it is for the Executive, it is for all. As of June 27, 2021, amount pledged 642,530. Amount redeemed 301,030. Amount to be redeemed 326,500. This is a miracle under seven months. Come on, let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. So we are now at 49% redemption rate. By the grace of God, and I want you to listen to this. By the grace of God, every member is encouraged to be a part of this prophetic journey. As your leader, I'm appealing to you, like I told you when I was teaching, I'm beseeching you, I'm urging you, by the mercies of God, that you get involved in this. Because it is what the Lord has commanded that we should do. Not only that, I see a great harvest coming. And I don't want any of you. It's not about money. It's about covenant. And, and, and you, want to, you want to jump into it. It is prophetic. And I want to thank our pastors for the way they've been promoting this every Sunday. And as you're hearing it again and again, if you are yet to be part of this, step in. We decide that God will steer the heart of everyone to be a part of this historic move. There is nothing that we cannot achieve in unity. In government NA of today, if we want to raise $4 million, we can do it. We can do it. So this is small for us, using the power of numbers. And we don't want to use the Pareto principle in this, where 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. No. We believe God. Thank you so much. I requested that our brother will uh, stop the video at that level. Um, tonight, I do know that God has spoken to you again using the things that he said during the convention. I have a little thing to just run over before we pray tonight when it comes to the video that we have watched tonight. I said to us at the beginning that a lot of people will look at it and say, oh, are these not the announcements of the things that are happening in government NA? Why are we listening to it again? That number one thing I want to raise from this is that every session in our church program, in our meetings, that you refer to just as announcements, oh, it's announcement time, it's not just a time, not just, you know, when you use the word just for anything, it's like it's unimportant. Like some people would say just a prayer meeting, as if prayer is not the main work that we have assumed to do and that will bring success to every work that we do for the Lord. The time that many of us refer to as just the announcement time is a time to catch a vision of your church's next level. There are many, many things that God speaks at that time. Recently, I there are some things now that I see God brewing in my life just because I listened to a session like this during the international convention that went uh, on in Nigeria in the, in, in, earlier in this month, August. So I want to encourage us. There are many, many ways by which God speaks to us. And there is no particular part of our gathering that you can pick on and say, this time I can do my own thing. 
and then I'll come back again and do what it asks us to do. Because throughout the length of what we do in our programs, God is speaking to his people. It could be the, during the time of announcement that God will eventually give you the vision for your life that will make you arrive at your promised land. So that is number one thing I want us to, to know. When you look also at what we have done tonight, you will come to realize that the work, that is this work, is a teamwork. This is a teamwork. Every player on stage now must play their part well. For one reason, you're not going to be there forever. And so even in Victory House, whatever you are doing now, thank God because your hand has found it to do. And the scripture says, whatever your hand find it to do, you do it with all your strength. That is what your hand has found to do now. And you need to understand how to do it with all your strength. I mean, I'm saying this because of what you just said. The present administration is going to come to an end uh, in less than one year. And another will take over. You look at them and say, oh, they're just coming. Before you know it, their own time is over. Now that's at the national level. What about in our own church too? Let's understand that the commitment that God has given to us at this time is a commitment that is timed. We are timed. Number one, we have a timed lifespan. Number two, there are circumstances that move us here and there, and you don't really understand what is the next thing that God is preparing for you to do? So we need to come to that understanding and do all that God has committed to us with all of our strength at this time. So that when we look back at what opportunity God has given to us, we're just praising. We're not just begin to say, oh, oh, I wish I spend my time in this way or that way, different from the way I have done it. I pray that the Almighty God will help you and I to do that which the Lord has given to us in his own strength and with his own power in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, if you look at everything that's been done, even during the convention, and especially during this voice of vision, you will realize that the chosen generation is become a target. And it's a good one too, because God is looking at this group in order to bring Gospel Faith Mission International to our next level, both not only at the national level, but at uh, our local levels. So I'm going to challenge CG uh, uh, Victory House uh, uh, group to wake up and assume the leadership, not tomorrow, but today. You see, and I want to say this, that get, getting off to college and life after college it's not a, a, a room or a pathway to say, I'm getting away from government. It's, it's uh, the stage is prepared for your return in power and more wisdom to be used of God for his own glory. Amen. And number four, I, I want to say this tonight, that each one of us should avail ourselves of necessarily equipping ourselves for our next level of responsibility. You had what Eno shared there, that when he, he, he knew that God was calling him to this world, he availed himself of going to Bible school. There are many avenues for us that God can use to equip us. You see, you, you cannot just say, I had a call and I go into it, because then you are not fulfilling everything that will make your call successful. There are things that God has given. When God was going to send Moses, he gave him a rod. And God did wonders and marvelous things through that rod. There are many, many things that you can take with you as your own equipment so that you can do the work that God has for you. If you just run off without taking the equipment along with you, you are likely going to meet with a shock of your life. So I'm challenging each one of us to avail ourselves. You see, you heard it that the school of ministry will start soon when it starts. Please, no matter what you are doing, avail yourself of the opportunity to enroll in that school. Government Victory House, let's enroll in that school. Let's get ourselves equipped so that we can do the things that God has for us. And if you are here tonight and you are a government single, 
either a man or a woman, I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. Yeah, from what you heard the NO say, this has been a concern of the National Executive Board that we have brainstormed on, and we not just brainstorm, but pray about, and we do it because of the concern that we have for this class of people. And if God has placed that burden on us, I know that God is burden for where you are, and God has not forgotten you, and God is going to bring to pass his purpose for your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, I want to say this, uh, uh, judging from where the end will start, that gospel part, uh, city partnership is not a thing that you need to hear and take off your ears and brush off. It's a thing to hear and just get in connect with what God is doing and make sure you are part of achieving the goal that God has for us. Not only being a part of that, but being a part of sharing the blessings that God has for his people. So tonight, I believe that God has used this. We didn't finish it. I'd like for you to go back and look at it and watch it and glean from it the things that God wants you to get so that you can be uh, active, useful, uh, a formidable member of this church in the end time program that it has for us as a church. I pray that the almighty God will help you and I to just be what he wants us to be in Jesus' name. Let's go to prayer tonight, shall we pray? Mighty God, we honor you and we give you praise for this time in your presence. We magnify your holy name for again reminding us of what you are doing. And when you are reminding us what you are doing, you are showing to us there are many, many greater things that you will yet do. And you are showing to us the path that we need to take, the faith that we need to have, the necessary equipment that we need to give to ourselves, and also the, the need for us to step forward by faith and be part of the things that you are doing. Tonight, we've had it. And Lord, all, as one will say that your will will be done, not only in government NA, but in government NA, in our local assemblies, government victory house, and also in our individual lives. We say yes to your will, and we say yes to your purpose. We therefore, Lord, release ourselves to you and say, oh God, in every way you have deemed it necessary, you have made a choice by yourself to use us. Lord, we say to you, here we are. Use us for your glory. And everlasting Father, I pray tonight that every issue in our lives that the enemy may be using to hinder, to make us think away, to not focus on what you want to do. Even as tonight, as we have heard your word, I pray for your divine intervention in individual affairs, in family affairs, the things that the enemy may be doing. Lord, I pray you put an end to it so that our lives, our strength, our heart, and everything that you have given to us may be completely focused on you and what you are doing. Thank you, precious Father. We return all the glory to you. We pray particularly for the CG. We ask for your grace upon this group. Yes, they are upcoming. But Lord, we want them to be upcoming in your will. And Lord, to be ready to yield to you completely. Father, we ask for the help from above for them in the name of Jesus. And thank you because you are the lifter up of their heads. You will lift them up in every uh, avenue and pathway they want to take in life. You will lead them. You will help them, and you will make them achieve us for your honor and praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you tonight for Government Victory House. You have shown to us, Lord, that wherever we are now, we are not going to be there forever. I pray for every one of us. Whatever our hands has found to do, help us, Lord, to do it with all of our strength. Lord, we return the praise and glory to you in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Everything I just shared with you is what you have on the, uh, on, on the screen right now. And uh, you can take it and let it be part of what you summarize tonight's session to be. Praise the Lord. You have any gifts tonight to give to the Lord? Even as we round up, make sure that you do it for the glory of God. Father, we pray that you will bless every offering that we have brought tonight. 
in return, you will bless each one of us beyond our the measure we ever imagine in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your mercy keep us. Some are going to walk tonight. We pray your mercy will keep them. We'll speak for them. Lord, we ask that you'll be their shield and you'll be their buckler. For those who are staying home and sleeping, we pray, Lord, that nothing will frighten us in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, again, we revisit the issue of Afghanistan. We plead your mercy, O oh God, over United States at this time and all her friends. We are praying, Lord, that by mercy, you will give a way to circumvent the efforts and the attempts of killers over uh, our people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God, because when you mean to deliver, you are able to deliver to the uttermost. And that we pray you will do for our servicemen and for all the friends of USA at this time. Thank you, our Father and our God. We we'll return all the praise and glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Now we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming and good night. God bless you. Amen. Host, please, can you stop the live stream from your hand, host, please? Me? Oh, host. <laughs>